We are surrounded by an array of fantastic gadgetry, incredible devices and awesome gizmos. But very few people can take this stunning technology, review, analyze and give a credible opinion. And that's why we decided to go to the best technology journalists in the country to find out just what mind-blowing gadgets they are playing with this week. This is Bite Me. The show that digs deep. To review the best of the best. I'm on my way to PK Roy's house. Now, PKR, as he's all known to us, is a man of fashion. Passion for tech, passion for food, and passion for fashion itself. Today, we've asked him to review the biggest device while featured on any tech show. And when I say big, I mean really, really big. His house. That's because his house is unique, it's special, and it's one of a kind in the country. I'm going to let PKR take over from here. Hi, I'm Prashanto Roy and I'm going to take you today into Green One. Uh, this is the first certified green home in the country and it has a Terry 5 star rating. Uh, this took a lot of time to do over two to three years but at the end of it, it's the first green home and what we hope to show you today is the things that you can do, maybe not go all the way to a 5 star rating but do some things to make your home green. So let's go inside Green One. So this, like I said, is a Terry Greha 5 star building, which means it has uh, pretty much all the check marks ticked in terms of materials. So to start with, the materials we've used in Green One are different. They don't use regular bricks, but things like this, autoclave deaerated concrete. These are large blocks made of fly ash and other materials, which are really light. And of course, they don't use as much energy to make as regular bricks. The inner walls are made of fly ash bricks. So this is the basement. And like I was saying, it's naturally lit, which is kind of unusual in a basement. You don't really expect to see uh, everywhere in the basement. No artificial lights, it's just natural daylight. And to do that, we've actually used the Architects Design Consortium. They've used extensive shafts at the back, at the side, to allow all this light to go in. So this is the ground floor. And as you can see here, there is again, there is a fair bit of natural light. Uh, whatever we're running off, the other lights in the house there, everything here is LED. On the inside the alcoves, there are LED strips. Out here, there are clusters of LED. Now, right now, in fact, there is no mains power coming into this floor. Everything is coming from the solar panels on top. So, whatever you see here is a combination of daylight plus LEDs which are being fed by solar power. So, these large glass windows and doors lead into some of these little balconies, which we use apart from utility devices like putting air conditioners outside units for things like this. This is a garbage recomposter. What we do is we put kitchen waste, organic kitchen waste, we dump it into the top pot and then we actually mix a little accelerator so that over the weeks it gradually turns into fertilizer. So I'll take you to the rooftop to see where the solar panels are which are actually powering this house. So as I was walking up the stairs this light came on because this a motion sensor like this one detected that I was coming up and put it on. The moment I walked away, after a minute that light is going to switch off. So this is the set of solar water heaters which are actually heating up the water uh, for Green One. There are no geysers in the house so it just heats up the water and when there's not enough sunlight to heat up the water really uh, you know, warm, uh, there is a booster heater in there. So this set of uh, the panels, one for each floor, does the water. There's another set of solar panels which generate electricity and those are over there. These are standard solar photovoltaic panels. Each pair of two panels is generating one kilowatt of electricity. And as we saw downstairs, that floor was being powered completely by sunlight, by the solar power going from these panels down into those LED lights over there. And so all this put together is what adds up to a Terry Swagriya five-star rating for Green One. 
And many of these things are things which you can actually simply do even for an existing house. And if you're building a new home, this is really the way to go. That was quite a house. Any questions for PKR, guys? Would you recommend others to do this or is it just too frustrating an experience? I think anybody building a home or an apartment complex or any building must look at green simply because it's doable, it doesn't cost very much and once you do it, it saves you energy and it actually starts paying back. And you actually feel good about staying in a green home, not just because of the light and air and all of that, but you know, the feeling that you've done something nice without having to spend extra. So I'd absolutely tell anybody building any kind of building to go and look at a green rating. A greenhouse costs more than 50% than a normal house. How does he justify spending that kind of money just to get a green tag? So first of all, a green home doesn't cost 50% more. In fact, a green home doesn't cost anything more. So it's between 0 and 10%. Uh, this home costs about 5 to 8% more per square foot to build. Uh, but actually, there are a lot of other homes which have been built around which are not green and they've actually cost a lot more. Mr. Roy, tell us what exactly were the hurdles you faced while making green one? Well, a lot of the challenges came from the fact that this was the first and, uh, you know, there weren't clearly documented things about like what to do with the solar heating system, the solar photovoltaic panels it hadn't been done for a small home. So it was a lot of discovery. It wasn't simply a book I could open or a website I could go to and find out everything. Uh, fortunately, there was a good architectural firm design consortium which actually put all this together and they had some uh, experience of this, uh, more with commercial buildings of course. And we had Terry. Terry, uh, a lot of information and support came from Terry, which is also the agency that audits this green home. That's all I have pretty much for this week. Samir, what do you have for us? A lot actually. My beat this time around takes me into the X-Men universe. Not the comic books, not the movies, but phones. Nokia has made its most aggressive controversial headline to date. Nokia, with its Windows-based Lumia smartphones, has been bought by Microsoft and has announced three smartphones based on, wait for it, Android. Yes, the phones have made quite a hype, but are they any good? We got super blogger and smartphone expert Clinton Jeff to find out. So Nokia released an Android phone. Nobody saw that coming. A couple years ago, if you told me Nokia was working on an Android phone, I would be very happy about it, but I would know you were lying because nobody thought that would happen. A lot of people wanted a Nokia phone for many, many reasons. One of them being the build quality and a couple other Nokia-related features. And this time around, that's just what we have. That Nokia announced Nokia X a couple weeks ago, and it's an Android phone, but it doesn't exactly look like what you'd expect an Android phone to be. Let's start with what you get with the phone. With the box, you get the usual Nokia blue color box. Um, you get a charger, and you get a very, very bright orangish red headset. Um, let's move on to the design. Nokia's always been known for design, and that's just exactly what we have over here. They have really high quality design, and very solid build quality as well. A really nice polycarbonate shell, uh, that actually can be removed, so you can remove this shell out over here. You get access to both the SIM card slots inside and a micro SD card slot as well. So in terms of design, yes, it is a very solid phone. It looks really cool. The colors are really bright. Um, it has very minimal ports around it, no camera key, because I don't think Nokia wanted to focus on the camera with this phone. Um, but all in all, in terms of design, it's a really good looking phone. So let's talk about hardware. This is a dual core phone with Android running on top of it. As a result, um, the UI is pretty okay. It's a little bit laggy. You can see instances of lag move in here and there because it is a heavy UI that's already on top of Android at this point. Usually with Android, you see a home screen, you see a drop-down notification bar, you see a list of apps. Over here, you kind of have a UI that's a mashup between Windows Phone and Nokia's Asha UI. It's very tile-based, as you can see. Um, and you have these groups of tiles that you can put anywhere. You can also install a widget right here on this home screen, but the UI is completely different from anything you've seen before. The thing though is that there is no multitasking list, so you can't really get to a list of apps that are running at the same time. There's only one app running at one time, which means 512 MB of RAM is pretty okay in that scenario. The UI is a little complicated for people who are used to Android. If you've never used an Android phone before, this actually might be a little simple. 
maybe it's a good thing that there's only one button below and the only real function of that button is to go back. Uh, you long press the button, it'll exit any app that you're in. So the camera is a three megapixel camera, uh, fixed focus like I said. There's also no flash, which means that at night, you won't be able to take any pictures at all. Uh, in terms of call quality, this is a Nokia phone, so in terms of call quality, it's really good. Battery life, it is an Android phone. You can get about a day's worth of usage out of it, but don't expect more. If it's if it's a heavy day, if you're doing a lot of things on this phone, you might have to charge it by early evening-ish. So to conclude, the Nokia X is an interesting phone. Uh, it's nothing like any Android phone you've ever seen before. So don't go into this purchase thinking you're buying an Android phone. Sure, you get the advantages of an Android phone, but you do have to get used to a completely different UI. But you do get access to all the Android apps that are out there at this price range, along with decent build quality that can survive a couple drops. This might be a real value for money phone in the end. So based on all of that, I give it about seven and a half. To improve the Nokia X, I think Nokia should focus on the camera just a little bit more because the fixed focus camera is okay, you can't get really decent shots. At this price range, I know that there are some phones out there which have a slightly better camera, at least they can focus. But all in all, the Nokia X is promising going forward. That was quite in-depth. Now Clinton is open for questions. Guys, fire away. How will Microsoft take this poison pill? If this phone is successful, isn't it proof that Microsoft's own phone sucks? That's a good question. Uh, the answer is not as easy, unfortunately. It's a good point that uh, Nokia has released this in the low end, so it's an affordable phone. So maybe Nokia had a problem making Windows phones that affordable. Uh, maybe that's why we have an Android phone at this price point and no Windows phone that is at the same price point right now. Okay, Clinton, I have a question for you. Isn't this a little too late for Nokia? I mean, isn't this something they should have done about two years ago? I agree, they should have done this two years ago. But now that it's happened, it's an interesting strategy and it does give users at the end of the day a choice between Windows phone at that price point or an Android phone or even a non-smartphone like the Asha phones. So Clinton, what do you think will happen now? Do you think uh, Microsoft will kill off this phone or it'll go on to become a big seller for Nokia? It all depends on how well it sells. If it sells really well, Microsoft can't cancel the project because legally they are obligated to keep it updated, at least to support it in terms of cru crucial updates. Awesome stuff, Clinton. Time to shut down the X and move to the G. Yes, it's Google Glass next, and I've heard Adamya has gone all the way to Chennai to bring us this story. Probably the one of the first time we're going to be seeing a really cool demo of Google Glass and we'll be telling you what are the cool things you can do with Google Glass. 